these six buttons on your Edge TX radio are way more powerful than you might realize. Most people aren't even using them, and the people who are using them probably aren't using them to their full potential. In this video, we are gonna go over the six position switches on Edge TX radios and all of the different ways that you can make them do kind of whatever you want them to do. What kind of things could you want them to do? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. What makes these switches so powerful is their configurability. So if we've got a radio and the manufacturer has given us a three position switch here and a two position switch here, and we want something else, then there's really nothing we can do short of physically swapping out the switch. And some Radio Master radios do let you physically swap out the switch. But what if you can't physically swap out the switch? Or what if you've already assigned all of the switches on your radio, you've run out of switches and you need a few extra switches? Or what if you wanna do something more sophisticated than a two position or a three position switch? What if you want a five position or a six position switch? Now, in this video, we're gonna go through all the different ways you can configure these switches. But before we dive deep into the details, let me just give you an overview of the different things you can do. I could configure these six switches as six individual momentary switches. So you press and you release, you press and you release, and each of them is controlling a different channel. I could configure some of them as momentary switches and some of them as two-way toggles. Press on, press off. Reminded of the Karate Kid. What if I want a three position switch? I could group some of these switches into three positions and it'll be one, two, three like a three position switch as three individual positions, or I could group them in a group of four, or I could group them in groups of two. There's a bunch of different ways that you can combine these different options. So that's the kind of thing that we're gonna get into in this video. So to begin with, where do I configure the options for these switches? I'm gonna press the model key on my radio and I'm gonna to go to the model setup. And then if I scroll down, I should see an option for customizable switches. Now I want to acknowledge that I'm doing this with the Radio Master T15. And the reason I'm doing that is because it has this nice, big, beautiful colored touchscreen. Uh, and the touchscreen is right next to the six position switches so you could easily see what I'm doing and what the effect is. If you don't have a radio with a color touchscreen, your interface is gonna look a little bit different, but all of the concepts that we're gonna talk about are the same. And the menus are actually the same too. You just don't have a color screen, you have a black and white one. So here on the Radio Master GX12, if I just press the model key and then I don't go immediately to the model setup, I need to actually page one time to get to the model setup screen. And then I scroll down and look, there is customizable switches and the exact same settings, here they are, switch one, two, three, four, five, the exact same settings are there, but I'm gonna keep working on the Radio Master T15. I'm not gonna go through it on both radios. And if you have a black and white screen radio, like this is my daily driver, you'll just need to sort of internalize the concepts and then find the same thing in the menu. It's all there. But hang on, what if you came to model setup and you didn't see customizable switches as an option? Some older radios don't have the ability to do customizable switches. They still have a six position switch, but that six position switch just acts like a rotary encoder, if you know what one of those is. It's basically a knob and that uh, you, it's like you're turning the knob from low to high. As you press the switches, it just moves from low to high. The individual switches on these older radios are not individually programmable. So if you go to model setup and you don't see customizable switches, then you can't do any of the things that I'm gonna show you in this video unless you buy a new radio that does support that feature. And no, there's no way in like firmware to update it. For this to work, each of these individual switches has to have a separate connection to the microprocessor in the radio so that it can tell the state of each individual switch as opposed to having all the switches wired up like a rotary encoder and acting like one single input. But we're gonna assume that you've got a radio that has that feature and we're gonna keep going. First, let's look at the type parameter. Uh, and the three options for type are none, toggle, and two pause. Uh, none is easy to explain. If I set this to none, then the switch simply doesn't do anything. I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but you could just disable the switch. I, I mean, by default, the switches don't do anything anyway because you haven't actually mapped them to a channel so although the switches may have some programming, they, they don't actually accomplish anything. So well, you can set it to none and the switch will just be disabled. The other options are toggle and two pause. And toggle works like, oh, can you see? Can you see that when I press it, it lights up. And when I release it, 
it releases. Toggle works like a momentary switch. When you press it, it becomes active. When you release it, it turns off again. Uh, two pause acts like a two position switch. So when I press it, it lights up. When I press it again, it turns off. Now the real power of these switches is gonna occur when I use the group setting. So we're gonna pause on that and we're gonna get the other easy stuff out of the way real quick. Uh, if your radio has the ability to assign custom colors to the six position switches, not all radios do, you can set the off state and the on state here with a color picker. So I can choose a color. Oh, that's not a very nice color. There we go. How about green for on? There you go. Green for on. All that work. And uh, red for off. Fine. So now the switch is green. I press it. It turns red. You can set different colors. That's just pure cosmetics, but it's nice to have the option. The startup option controls what condition the switch will be in when the radio first powers up. Last means that it will remember the last setting for the switch when you powered the radio down, uh, and then down and up is either pressed or released. So we set that to down, or we set that to up, and it defaults. We won't see an effect of that unless we were to power cycle the radio. I will say I, I always forget whether down is on and up is off or vice versa. So if you decide to use this real quick, power cycle the radio after you're done and make sure the switch is in the position you want it to be in, the condition you want it to be in when you power cycle the radio. I'm just gonna set that to last though. For now, it doesn't really matter. So at this time, we have six individual two position switches that are completely independent and unrelated from each other. But what if I wanted to do something more sophisticated than that? That's where the groups come in. In order to uh, explain how groups work, I'm just gonna demonstrate putting two switches in a group. So by default, these switches are not grouped. There's just dashes there. That means the switches are independent. They're not in a group. Uh, if I put switches one and two in a group, then the first thing that you're gonna see is I now have group settings for group one, now that I have enabled group one. Uh, and the way that it works is when switches are in a group, only one of those switches can be active at a time. So if I press one and then I press two, one will turn off. And I go back to one, two will turn off. Because these switches are grouped, only one of them can be active at a time. Three, four, five, and six are still exactly like they were. They're completely independent but switches one and two are in a group and only one of them can be active at a time or none of them can be active at a time. So I have the ability to simply turn the group off. If you don't want that, if you want a, a case where the group is always one or the other, but never none of them, what you'll do is you'll go to group one and you'll enable the always on option. And then either one or two will always be on, but you can never turn them off. Pressing one again, simply does nothing. Um, what if I made some of these in the group a uh, toggle? Oh, hang on, I can't. So with the always on option, I believe that's what's done that. With the always on option, you can no longer choose toggle because toggle means that when I release the switch, it will turn off. And always on means that the switches will always be, one of them will always be on. So that's that, that option locks out toggle. If I turn off always on and choose toggle, then switch one, becomes a toggle, right? And switch two is a two pause. But if switch two is active and I press switch one, switch two is deactivated. And then when I release switch one, it turns off. I have no idea when you would want that kind of logic. I really don't, but I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm trying to think of something now. Like I have a toggleable option, but then I have another option that disables the toggleable option, and then we reset back to some default state when I release the other one. I don't know what that would be, but you can build that logic. Also notice that when I group these switches, the startup option for the individual switches disappears, and the startup option now applies to the group, and I'm choosing which of the switches will be activated when uh, the radio powers up, or will none of the switches be activated. Notice that off will disappear if I enable always on, because off is no longer an option once always on is enabled. Now a two switch group is not that interesting because really I could accomplish the same thing simply by having a single switch in two position. Really a two switch group is 
two positions and a single switch with two pauses, two positions on and off. I guess it might be nice to see the little little uh, LED move from one to two, but it's basically the same thing. The real power comes when I start doing three or more that I can really start to do some sophisticated stuff. Well, it's basically the same stuff, just we've got three positions now, etc. And if I wanted to duplicate the old style functionality where the six switches act like a simple rotary encoder, I would set all of them to group one. And I believe one, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yep. And I would choose always on and I would choose startup of switch one. And now I have made this radio act just like the older radios that didn't have the ability to individually program the switches, but that's how you would do that. So I've got three groups, up to three groups, and I can customize the switches. How do I then make the switches actually like read out onto an aux channel? That's the next thing we're going to learn. In order to do this, let's, uh, let's make our life complicated. We're going to have three switches in group one. That switches one, two, three, two, three. For group two, we're also going to choose, uh, let's not choose always on for group two, just so we see the difference. So group two is switches four and five, but we can turn it off. And then switch six is gonna be a toggle, a momentary switch, and we'll play with that as well. So then let's go to the mixes screen, and this is where we assign physical switches to output channels, to aux channels. And the first mistake people make is they do some fancy shenanigans trying to tie the individual switches to the outputs. It gets really complicated and there's an easier way to do it. Let me add a new mixer uh, line. I'm gonna put it on channel 10. It doesn't really matter what channel I put it on. This isn't a real quadcopter. Uh, and the source is going to be there we go, GR1. So in the source, uh, you see GR1 and GR2. That's because we've defined group switch group one and switch group two. Those won't be there if you haven't defined any switch groups. And if you define three switch groups, there'll be GR3 as well. If I select GR1, that makes switch group one the source for this mix. And watch what that does to the outputs. So right up here, we can see the outputs. And you can see that as I press the switches, one, two, Three, the channel goes low, middle, high. So we can immediately see what uh, position these three switches are on. Now, what if I turn off the switches and none of them are active? What will that do? If I change this to GR2, that gives me the option. So here is four is middle and five is high. Four is middle, five is high, and none is all the way down. Interesting. So we've basically got three positions here, even though there are two switches. If none of them is active, it's all the way down. If four is active, it goes to the middle. If five is active, it goes high. What if I had like five or six in a group? Oh, well, hang on. What about switch six? Uh, the simplest way to do that would be to just press switch six as the source. There we go, switch six. And now it should be very simple. When the switch is released, the channel is low. When the switch is pressed, the channel is high. That's as expected. Um, can I fill in the source just by pressing a button in the group? What if I go here and press a button? No, it reads the individual switch. So you can read the individual switch positions as well as the state of the group separately if that's something you want to do. But going back to my original question, it doesn't look like there's a way to quickly select a group. What if I have customizable switches? Let's put five switches in group one. And let's go to mixes and edit this mix. And now when I go two, ah, three, four, five. Okay, so now it's just dividing the channel up into five positions equally. And if I were to turn off always on for group one, then we should probably just get six positions mixes edit now if we turn yeah see now switch number one is no longer the lowest if i turn it now with them off it's all the way down three four five very nice so what you're going to do is you're going to think about how many positions you need the switch to have you're going to group that number of these buttons into a group 
and then you're just going to basically have a rotary encoder or anything you're looking for with all this custom configuration and the channel will move accordingly. Very cool, very powerful, and very simple. Well, simpler than it would be if you were to try to program this exact logic using traditional switches. That's probably not simple in an absolute sense, but in a relative sense. If you love this video, I want you to know it's part of a series. I did a whole tutorial series about the Edge TX operating system, taking you, this is a relatively complicated video later in the series, but taking you through all of the basic setup of Edge TX, all of these screens that you see here, like what even are all these things? I go through all of them, pretty much all of them, and take you through with practical examples that help you understand what to do and how to use it. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'll put a playlist in the video description below and I'll put a card on screen, but not before I remind you that I have a Patreon. If you love this content, please consider joining my Patreon. Here's that card on screen. There's a link in the video description below to my Patreon. If you don't know what that is, well, you'll see the plug in other videos. So I'll just let you go. See you in the next one.